Hey everyone, we're back with a director's spotlight here on the HodgePod for Find Your Film. We have a lot of things to talk about, and that is thanks to Bruce Perky, thanks to his this, his actual passion for this filmmaker named Larissa Shapitko. Bruce, we just finished the Find Your Film episode. I, I'm sure this is the one film or, I guess, person you really wanted to talk about all evening. Let's lead off with you, Larissa Shapitko, your initial thoughts, and why did you pick her for this specific spotlight? Well, I picked her. She's one of those people that I kind of discovered roundabout in that rewatched Come and See recently, and I was doing a bunch of research on Come and See, which has become this acclaimed, tough watch, war movie. A lot of people put it on their top war movies of all time list uh, and it was directed by Elam Klimov and I was reading stuff about him and kind of trivia and all this kind of stuff and they kept mentioning his wife Larissa Shapitko and that she was a filmmaker and I was like she's a filmmaker and then I looked up and sure enough she has two films on Criterion why have I never heard of Larissa Shapitko what's the deal with her and I started looking at her a little more and listening to some people talk about her and looking at what she has out there lo and behold she made a war movie about five six years before he did it's considered her best movie The Ascent in 1977 she died in a car crash with a bunch of her crew members in 1979 while she was starting her final movie which by the way her final movie is called The Farewell well it would have been her final movie if she had had a chance to make it who knows how many more she might have made. Elam Klimov finished that movie in her stead because she only got like a few shots before she died, but she had done like all the pre-production on it. So that kind of was all interesting to me. The fact that she's a woman in, in uh, Russia, she's a contemporary of Tarkovsky and Klimov. She's right in there with them and she's making her own films, yet, yet we don't really hear about them. Kind of like we talked in the past about Maya Darren, or we talked about various people that kind of don't rise up. All these other people get all this acclaim now, you know, years later, and you don't really hear about Larissa Shapitko. So I went back and watched um, The Ascent, and I immediately was like, wow, this movie is right on par with Come and See. This is an amazing war movie that's not an action war movie, but it's a fantastic war movie, and it has its own kind of punch that it packs. And then I went, I also watched her first, well, I don't think it's her very first feature film, but it's her first feature film that you can find very easily, and that's called Wings. And she made that 11 years earlier. 1966. It, obviously, you see the growth as a filmmaker, but would you say, would you tell cinephiles to watch The Ascent first, appreciate that, and then maybe go to go to Wings? Or do you go the other way where you start with Wings as sort of the beginning or close to the beginning and then ascend to The Ascent? I, I think I would start with The Ascent because I think if that grabs you, you'll, be, you'll stick with Wings a little longer because Wings is a slower and quieter movie because it's just about, it's mostly a woman's point of view in 1966 in Russia and watching what she does. And by the time you get to the end of that movie, you see the greatness, the flashes of greatness and the visual style in the final act of that movie. But it takes a little bit to get to it, but you can recognize it. And then if you've already seen her other film, you can be like, oh, wow, in 10 years, she went from here to there. And God knows what she would have done in 10 or 20 years past that. So The Ascent, here is the IMDb summary of it. It centers on two Soviet partisans on a mission to gather food. They contend with the winter cold, the occupying Germans, and their own psyches. That is a very simple one-sentence summary of this movie, The Ascent. There's no better way to describe this film. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is one of these movies where, Eric, do you think there's a barrier to entry regarding The Ascent? Do not watch The Ascent if you don't like black and white movies that are thoughtful and have something to say about war and uh, the absurdity of politics. Um, yeah. You mentioned the uh, the partisans. I, I love how it's like, oh, you're a partisan. And it's like, wait, you're not? You're the one wearing the colors, dude. You're the one making all your life and death decisions based on what color someone's wearing, what symbol someone has plastered on their uniform. I, I also love how this movie, it does the, uh, it has a bunch of different points of view on, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? What, um, um, honor, dignity? Yeah, or... there, there you go, like honor, but not like I'm an honor and I'm honorable and I will fight for my country. It's it's uh, someone is uh, honorable. I'm going to die because, um, you know, it's it, it's the right thing to do. You know, I can't put someone else in danger. Bruce, I don't know if maybe you remember the line, but there was uh, something along the line of uh, your life is worth living or something. If you can or I, I, I can't remember. I, I only watched this one time. The main character, well, I guess one of the main characters his whole thing is uh he's not gonna he's not gonna crack he's not gonna break because it's the right thing to do he's I, he's willing to put his life on the line and he's not going to take the coward's way out meanwhile you have other characters who do take coward's ways out for different reasons uh you have one of the characters that's like uh 
it's like dude i didn't want to be here to begin with and fuck you i just want to get home there's uh, another character that's like uh i, got, I gotta get, get back to my kids i'm, I'm sorry i'm said you know i'm sorry i gotta take this weasley way out but if i don't my kids are gonna starve to death because yeah, fucking took me away from home and they're just sitting there out in the cold all by themselves. Much like when we talked about breaking in the in the last uh, episode, this doesn't have a very positive outlook on war because quite honestly, war is not something they should be lauded. It's a terrible thing that humans do and continue to do and we will be far, far in the future and probably still killing each other over stupid shit. And this is kind of, uh, yeah, this kind of just lays it all out on the table. And and not in an obvious way, but kind of in a, you watch the characters do that. And that those are just ideas I came up with. But I imagine those are probably the ideas that uh, Larissa Shapitko probably wanted us to think while watching this. Yeah, on a... On a historical level, if you're a cinephile, one of the main reasons to see one of the many reasons to see the ascent is the performance of Boris Plotnikov as Sotnikov, the character of Sotnikov. If you follow his journey throughout the film, and I'm not, I'm not going to give too much away, but obviously, like a lot of these, you know, a lot of these Russians, they are suffering through the film because of this German occupation. His character is probably one of the more haunting characters you'll ever see in the history of cinema like eric was saying this movie shot in black and white so the stark that that image the stark image of the black and white images snowbound area along with the haunted eyes of sotnikov i look it's a very it's a very tough thing to watch but it's still arresting it's arresting cinema and it's a very immersive narrative even if you are i guess in a way suffering through the the journey of it also starring in this movie is vladimir kostuyukin and he plays the other character, Sotnikov's colleague and friend, Ryback. And it's about how Ryback is trying to help Sotnikov in his different plight. Sotnikov's not very healthy throughout the narrative, but we, we see Ryback making some decisions as well regarding sacrifice and survival. This movie is about what will you do in terms to survive another day in this world? What are you going to do? What will you give up? So uh, on the thematic level, it worked. On a cinematic level, I would have. I can't wait to see more of Lyris's work because there are moments in this movie regarding the pacing where you are absolutely nervous there is a situation regarding a will they or won't they be caught scenario that goes on for quite a while and the fact that it goes on for quite a while makes you really on the edge of your seat so she she was very good with the pacing the visual compositions are top notch it's a very visceral piece of work and uh, the highest praise for the ascent and the final moments will definitely grip you. Bruce, your review of the ascent. Yeah, pretty much. I'm right along with all both of you on this. Um, I ended up watching it again. Uh, I was struck by a few things because I could kind of focus on. I already kind of knew the story beats, so I could kind of focus on some other stuff. And some of the shots she does in this movie are, are absolutely gorgeous. And she she shoots it all in like 40 degrees below zero. And there's this whole or whatever it is. It's some crazy cold. They're all in it. And she wasn't dressed in any more you know outfits than they were so they're all basically freezing while they're making this movie uh, and it looks it gives it a, a, a level of realism when you're watching it just because of the settings also the way she shoots faces she does tons of close-up on people's faces and i kept being reminded of dryer like i kept thinking of uh, is it what the passion of joan of arc i think yes that's the real famous and i yeah. feel like some of the shots especially she does of uh, satnikov really felt like that and yeah. also she just does some really interesting things the way she frames things um we're not going to talk about what the ascent the title the ascent refers to but when that occurs there's a music cue that comes back a few times and it almost reminded me of the music cues of from like the dark knight or something where it's this low it doesn't there's no music at all and it slowly starts rising and it's kind of cacophonous but it's also this kind of building string and this building pressure of the music as you literally see well i'm not going to say what all the shots are but there's a shot where you see just the edge of a hill and then you see our characters faces as they climb that hill coming up out of the edge of that hill and some of those kind of shots are just stunning uh, beautiful and also thematically work in the movie really well and there's a climactic moment which we're not going to talk about and the way that is shot is impeccable and oh, oh, just just a gut punch and a half the way it's done i think this is a movie if you like great films of any sort it's a film you should seek out and i i don't know about you guys but this is not like tarkovsky this is not this highly metaphorical like symbolic piece where people are just kind of standing around there there's an actual simple 
story here, right? Yeah. Two, two partisans set out from their group to find food. Go find food. Find a local farmhouse. Go find food. See what you can do. Try to stay alive. Bring it back to us. That's the beginning. And it's them trying to do that and trying to stay alive and trying to avoid the Nazis and what happens from that. And it's all a very grounded and realistic story. You don't have to interpret it if you don't want to. But like you both said, it deals with so many moral ambiguities and it doesn't it doesn't say that any of them are absolutely right or absolutely wrong because it shows it in such a way that it makes sense and it kind of forces you to say like what would i do like what what is the right move i mean they're all the choices are bad there are no good choices so it really just becomes like what is the worst choice and i didn't write down his name but the guy who plays the collaborator interrogator oh, he's fantastic. they meet at one point he's so that good. guy is a famous guy and he's in a bunch of tarkovsky stuff and the the way he plays his part in this movie, it could be just a, a mustache twirling, like evil guy, but he does it so subtly and he, you hate him so much. And when I saw him the second time around, when I saw his face appear and I, and I watched how subtly they played out that scene, just where he does something simple, like at some point he just stops and he opens a door to go get somebody else. And you're like, you motherfucker, I hate you so much. <laughs> you're such an <laughs> asshole. I, I right. thought, I thought it was really strange how they, uh, they, in the movie, the, they weren't normally, if you make a wrong move as a prisoner, you're going to get the shit kicked out of you or you're going to get thrown in wherever but they seem kind of really laid back for a lot of a lot of it like you have the yes. interrogator guy you're talking about and the one guy's like are you guys done no okay cool i'll come back you know it's like in any other movie it's like i don't feel her i am here you know they're like kind of robotic and and yep. they're not really that way in this one and you know how that struck me, especially the second time. So I watched that a lot too. That struck me as they so know that they control everything that you being a little bit out of control in a little moment doesn't even phase them. They, yeah. they know they have the upper hand. They have the upper hand so completely that they're not even worried. And also the way the Nazis are played out in certain scenes, they're so nonchalant. And basically you just see them as nonchalant. They're just like kidding and joking about bullshit off on the side of things when really big stuff is happening. And to them, it's like, yeah, it's another day at the office. And that stuff is maddening as well. And it's yeah. just like, uh, and once again, like you said, they could play them up as really like, hey, 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 we got you now. But it's more like, hey, um, what are we going to do now? Okay. okay. Hey, grab that bench. There's also a part where uh, they're kind of uh, marching. You know, they're all in unison doing the military thing. And then they just break off and just like, oh, okay, anyway. And then yep. it, it's like, dude, you guys are murdering people. And you just break off like it's not that big of a deal. It's not that yeah. big of a deal. Why the fuck do you need to murder people? Yeah, and that's that's one of the really evil and things that kind of sinks into you in this movie. It's that the banality of the evil. Like, yeah. it's not like this scene-chewing, angry thing. It's just like, yeah, we just do this. This is just what we do. You know? once, once Bruce Perky makes his millions from Find Your Film, from our YouTube and our website, once one of the first purchases he will get as a as a fun purchase for all the millions he will be making, he will purchase for $31.96 the Blu-ray of The Ascent, which is available on the Criterion Collection. Special features include as Bruce Perky's mouth gets watered, it's watery and it's, it's filled with saliva. Look at this, special features. New 4K digital restoration. Wow. Selected scene commentary with film scholar Daniel Bird. How about Bruce? A video, a new video introduction by Anton Klimov, son of director Larissa Shapitko and filmmaker Ellen Elam Klimov. Nice. Mm -hmm. How about a new interview with actor Lyudmila Polyakova, I guess one of the actors in the film. And also here's for you a 1967 short film by Larissa Shapitko called The Homeland of Electricity. We're going to talk about Larissa, the 1980 short film that both Bruce and Eric watched. There are two documentaries from 2012 on Larissa Shapitko. <laughs> there's so many. There's a new English subtitle translation, an essay by poet Fanny Howe, and lastly, a program from 1999 featuring an interview with Shapitko. Co. So, Bruce, when you make your millions, $31 sounds good for you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, The Ascent, and, and beautiful cover, by the way, for The Ascent. This looks amazing, Bruce. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. This is, for me, look, the movie won the Golden Bear at the 1977 Berlin Film Festival. So, to your point, Bruce, around that time, very well known. She's obviously a, spot, a spotlight on her on the Criterion Collection. So, she gets from among the diehard cinephiles like us. Her name's out there. But like you said, you wanted to spotlight her because she's really not, she should be more well-known than she is right now, right? Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, she's made one of the best war movies of all time. I mean, she's she should be up in that conversation. And I don't ever see her 
discussed in that conversation. At least, I mean, she might be certain, certain control, like corners, but the average person, have you ever heard of her? I mean, I mentioned her, you're like, I don't know who she is, <laughs> right? I mean, you don't, you don't hear about her. I also said, I don't know who you are. So I'm very, that's I'm very, not yeah, very, that's, that's very, fair. very good. That's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. <laughs> look, look. I mean, The Ascent, I mean, I don't even know, do we give this movie ratings? For me, this is a five-star film. Eric, what do you, what, do you, what is it? What's your rating on The Ascent? What do you think? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to pressure you into five stars. What, if, what did you say? I mean, what, one star that, banger? What, 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 The Ascent? What? Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I would say five stars. This is, uh, mm. I, I think that um, Paths of Glory kind of hits on some of the themes that this one does a lot harder and a lot better. Um, but this movie also kind of uh, does a few more nuanced things that Paths of Glory does not. So I think if you watch uh, The Ascent and Paths of Glory, like if, if you could somehow mash those into one movie, that, that would be like the perfect horror movie, I think. Yeah. And you can see why Very I compared good, them. Eric. Even though they're not the same, there's something about them, the way that they work, that kind of hits the same part of your brain or something. So Bruce, the ascent, a three-star banger for you. Wait, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> so goofy. <laughs> yeah, this is a five-star classic for me. Um, it right, it, I I'd say this is right along with Klimov's work, and it's interesting to see the two. I see them together and think like a married couple, each separately made these two movies, and one is just as forcing into the visceral experience of just being, being like shell shocked by war, and this other one is almost equally as impactful, but more on a, almost like a philosophical, emotional level. And the fact that two people that close could do this just kind of mind blows my mind just to even think about it. Well, what would probably blow you mind, your mind even more is if you eventually, I think Bruce, you're gonna watch probably all of her work. And if you find some other gems, I mean, like Wings, you said is at least worth a watch, right? It's at least, it's a solid enough movie it's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. I just think it's not quite as impactful as this movie, but I would say there's stuff, especially in the final third, that is pretty breathtaking as well, especially since it's one of her first works and you're seeing a person just kind of come out of nowhere and make this movie and have such a strong voice. Yeah. Wow. It is pretty sad that The Ascent was her quote unquote last film, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I guess... Uh, Several years later, Klimov, his last film is Come and See, and the previous film before that is the the uh, movie that he made based on Chapitko's screenplay. So it'd be interesting to see if she was still alive, what kind of collaborations they would have, how maybe cinema would have written Who knows what would have happened? There's a lot of what ifs. That said, Bruce, you think even with all that, with all that tragedy, there's just it's just an achievement when you look when you're looking back at the body of work of Larissa. I, I would say so. I mean, there's a lot of filmmakers that never make a movie as good as that. So the fact that she was able to even make one movie as good as that, as good as that in the seventies in Russia is a pretty, uh, pretty amazing feat. I, I, real, yeah. real quick. I want to throw to Bruce. Um, Cause uh, you also had us watch the short um, Larissa, which was mm -hmm. her husband's basically um, tribute to his wife. And um, that, that was really cool to watch. Mostly it was just, uh, just random shots of her movies and of her and then her uh, i'm assuming it's from an interview but i was looking for uh I, before i saw that i was looking for a uh, farewell and i saw a thing of farewell it was a bunch of uh people coming off a boat with gas cans and then they walk it have you seen that or do you know what that is? Uh, I don't. Uh, I have not seen the movie Farewell. I'm interested in it because I think well, like you said it, it was just it was just three minutes. They get out there. They come oh. up on a boat. They come off on the dock. They have a bunch of gas cans. And then the next shot is just them walking to a house. I, I didn't know what that was, but I, I, I don't I, know what that I'm is so, either. OK, nope. well, if you're listening to this and you know what that is, Joseph Bridges, that's probably you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Maybe let us know. <laughs> So that is the work of Larissa Chapico. No, Bruce, I'm sorry. The uh, the short, which I didn't get to, Larissa, it's, is it worth watching, like Eric was saying, if, you've, if you're if you a fan of The Ascent, or is it, or is it you have yeah. to watch The Ascent to really appreciate the short, or can, is that a standalone watch anyway? I think it's, I would watch it after you watch one of her movies or after you watch The Ascent, just because it has a couple shots and scenes in there that, that you probably would want to see in the original movie itself. I think it's more of an interesting, kind of a, a curious piece, because it's the idea of here's a grieving husband making a tribute to his wife in film. And I don't think of a time that's ever really happened either. Like, <laughs> can you think of any <laughs> filmmakers 
who made a tribute after the death in film for their filmmaking spouse. I, yeah. I can't think of that ever occurring. And you can tell there's a passion even in that short. Like he puts a passion in the way that he edits it together and puts the music and everything. It's just really it's pretty raw. You know, it's just like raw emotion. Yeah, and oh. the and the stuff that she's saying about filmmaking, about how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, in uh, her as a female filmmaker, a uh, woman filmmaker, so like every every frame of every movie I've done is me speaking as a woman, and yep. like she's she's really passionate about her art coming through, not just making pretty flashbangs that look pretty on when you project them, but like she's she really wants to say something. Yeah, you know, whether or not that comes through is up to anyone watching it. But I, I don't think you can say that uh, she didn't care about what she was doing. Well, and I'd say in that point, and we can end up here pretty quick, but that's where she, Wings kind of really shines because it's 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 like the anti Bechtel test movie. Like it's almost all women talking about stuff that doesn't necessarily refer to a man and a woman's journey and a woman's life and a woman who's trying to find her way in the middle of her life. And it's in a way that's not stereotypical, and it's very, very interesting. Also, I, I want to point out that this uh, the uh, the ascent came out in 1977. This looks like a Maya Darren movie. Not the not yeah. the weirdness of a Maya Darren movie because Maya Darren goes out there, but it, the 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 grain of the film, the way it looks. This does not look like a movie that came out in 1977. This looks like a 40s or earlier type movie. That's why I said like Dreyer. Looks like Dreyer almost. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she was influenced by Dreyer as well. But uh, final thoughts on Larissa Shapitko, Bruce, before we uh, as we end this director spotlight. If nothing else, I say ch search out The Ascent because it's just a fantastic movie. Even if you're not drawn to go search up all of the stuff she's done, um, it's pretty much a semi-lost masterpiece, I think, for a lot of people. And uh, it's something you would love to have in your brain and your eyeballs if you love film. Yes, The Ascent. We love that movie so much. And I can't wait to see some more of her work. And I don't... Bruce, I'm, I'm putting this out there. Who knows? Maybe I might get, I might actually trump you and start watching her films, all of her films before you get to them. And I'm just going to show all my intelligence. There's only here. about four. So I think you can do it pretty quickly if I'm you gonna want. Do, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to make sure that you're the first person to watch Alienoid 2 just because of that. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. I, yeah. So the next one for us will be uh, Samuel Fuller's spotlight for the movie The Big Red One. But until then, yes, Criterion Collection, go check out The Ascent. There's a lot of, Larissa Shapitko stuff on the Criterion channel. You can check that out or you can go physical media. And obviously, how did you guys watch The Ascent? Uh, just purchasing it, right? Uh, digital? YouTube? Is that how you guys? I saw it on YouTube. You saw yeah. it on YouTube? There's a yeah. bunch. Uh, there's uh, lots and lots of Russian films are on YouTube because I think the copyright rights are really weird in, in Russia. So I think... oh, and that's the last thing we didn't mention. A lot of this stuff is, takes place right in the area that's in conflict right now. Yeah. Belarus, Ukraine. This is like still the center of the world when it comes to conflict. And it's interesting to see something from that long ago and it's the same stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, the, you watch a movie like this and it's like, oh, people were so barbaric back then. It's like, that shit's still going on. It's 2022. And that it's going on still tonight going on. <laughs> yeah. in Ukraine. Tonight. And it's that I do that nervous laughter, but it's it's actually kind of pathetic that humans are they've not evolved past that. But I mean, we're basically hairless apes, so that's thanks what, for that's what thanks for get. the pick me up, Eric. We will see you guys next week here on Find Your Film again. Watch the ascent.